Hi guys, Olive here, here today to show you the 24 nonfiction books I plan on reading in 2024. I made this exact same kind of list for 2023, and it works so well for me, I respond so well to the structure of this kind of list, that I've decided to do it all again for 2024. It works really well in helping me make sure I'm getting some of these nonfiction books under my belt. I have a toxic trait of avoiding any and all popular books when they are popular, which is fine, I guess, except it means that I miss out on a lot of big nonfiction books that it feels like everyone else has read. I avoid them just because they are popular. I would like to stop doing that. I've been trying to stop doing that over the past two years or so, and you'll see on this list I am continuing to try to stop doing that. There are many big popular nonfiction books on my 2024 list, but then there are also books that I've simply heard really good things about. And then there are others from my shelves that I just wanna finally read. Since there are two dozen books on this list, let's not waste any more time. We'll get straight into talking about the books. The first book on my 2024 nonfiction reading list is The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls, the hugely popular memoir about this author's very unconventional upbringing. I truly cannot believe I haven't read this book yet, but I knew I wanted to after reading and really enjoying her latest novel, which was called Hang the Moon. I'm also finally going to get around to reading Moneyball by Michael Lewis in 2024. I've read a few of Michael Lewis's books in the past, but I am eager to read more of his books. And I'm going to start with this story of how a baseball manager creatively used statistics to turn a low budget underdog team into something very special. I'm also excited to watch the movie adaptation finally, after I read this. On my list for 2024, I've also made an attempt to add in some classic works of nonfiction that I haven't read yet. Pilgrim at Tinker Creek by Annie Dillard is one of them. It is a Pulitzer Prize winning work of nature writing that meditates on the changing seasons in Tinker Creek, Virginia. This is a very famous work of nonfiction from a Pittsburgh native, which makes it just that much more surprising that I've managed to leave this one unread at this point in my life. But a newer book that I I couldn't resist putting on my 2024 list is called The Devil's Element, Phosphorus and a World Out of Balance by Dan Egan. And this is a book all about the history of the element and its myriad uses. It's a component in everything from fertilizer to fire bombs. I've read quite a few books now on radium, but I was fascinated to see that there's a related book on phosphorus. And this one actually has some glowing reviews to recommend it. Another one I've heard great things about is Dope Sick, Dealers, Doctors, and the Drug Company That Addicted America by Beth Macy, a book that investigates the ever worsening opioid crisis here in America. After I read Patrick Radden Keefe's Empire of Pain, all about the company behind OxyContin, I knew I would eventually follow up with this book. On the heels of reading my very first Michael Pollan book earlier this year, I put The Botany of Desire on my 2023 list, which I then read and I loved it. I wanted to add another one of his books to my 2024 list. The one I decided to go with is The Omnivore's Dilemma, A Natural History in Four Meals. And it seems like this one discusses the foods that we eat and what systems are in place to bring those foods to us. And as someone who does some light gardening and lots of healthy cooking for myself and my husband, this one is more relevant to me than ever. The seventh book on my list is Made, Hard Work, Low Pay, and A Mother's Will to Survive by Stephanie Land. This is a memoir about how the author left an abusive relationship and then took a job cleaning houses in order to support her family as a single mother. I've heard great things about this one, and I know it has a Netflix adaptation that I would very much like to watch after I finish reading the book. The next one on my list is The Gene, An Intimate History by Siddhartha Mukherjee. This is a science book all about our genes or the codes that define our physical makeup. I had spoken about this book in a video I made all about the most intimidating nonfiction books on my TBR. And it was on that list, not really because of the subject matter, I mean, maybe a little bit. It was mainly on there because of how long this is. However, I have read another one of this author's books called The Emperor of All Maladies, which was a so-called biography of cancer. And while that book was a lot to deal with, as you would imagine, it was well worth the effort. And people in the comment section of that intimidating nonfiction books video had mainly positive things to say about this one. So it's made the jump from that most intimidating nonfiction books list to the to be conquered list. A memoir from a few years back that I intend to finally get to in 2024 is Uncanny Valley by Anna Weiner. This author's story of experiencing the surreal startup culture in Silicon Valley. 
I've heard great things about this one. And since my husband works in tech, it might be one that I pass along to him after I'm done with it. But back to classic nonfiction, I'm also planning on reading Angela's Ashes by Frank McCourt, another Pulitzer Prize winner that I hear manages to somehow be heartbreaking and hilarious at the exact same time. It's a memoir first of his very early life spent in Brooklyn, followed by stories from his family's life in Ireland, where they struggled against poverty and also his father's alcoholism. If I fall in love with this one, which I'm kind of suspecting I'm going to, then I'm in for some good news because there's not just one, but two sequels and there's a film adaptation. Book number 11 on my 2024 nonfiction list is Unbowed by Wangari Mathai, a memoir from the recipient of the 2004 Nobel Peace Prize, in which she discusses how she grew up in Kenya and also her time spent as an environmentalist and an activist. I don't know how it's possible that I, as a prolific nonfiction reader, have somehow managed to avoid all of John Krakauer's books. But in 2024, I'm going to aim to rectify that. I'm going to read one of his most popular books called Into Thin Air, A Personal Account of the Mount Everest Disaster. And this is the author's story of a terrifying mountain climbing experience. The next book on my list, book number 13, the one that takes us into the second half of this list, is by an author that I've previously read before. It's Stray by Stephanie Dandler. This is by the author of Sweet Bitter, which is a novel that I absolutely loved. But in this memoir of hers, she discusses a lot of the family traumas in her own past. Next on my list is a science book that's been gathering dust on my shelves for far too long. I've been meaning to read this one for quite some time. It's The Evolution of Beauty by Richard O. Prum. This is a book that looks at the very curious tendency of wildlife, mainly birds, to select mates not just based on fitness when it comes to survival, but also on their own perceptions of beauty. It's something that seems to contradict Darwin and his theory of natural selection, but it's actually something that Darwin himself noticed, and he made a whole different theory about it. And this book talks about that theory. A nonfiction book on my list that was very popular online fairly recently is Cultish, The Language of Fanaticism by Amanda Montell. And this book is about the language that cult leaders and higher ups within those types of organizations use to control the people underneath them. This one being as popular as it was for that period of time, of course, I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole when everyone else was reading it. But now that the hype has died down a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. But speaking of cults, I am also adding Going Clear, Scientology, Hollywood, and the Prison of Belief by Lawrence Wright to my list for 2024. This is a deep dive into the terrifying world of Scientology, a topic that I don't know much about because, frankly, it gives me the creeps and I've not wanted to learn more about it before now. Thankfully, we get away from the whole cult theme with this next book. It's called Long Live the Tribe of Fatherless Girls by T. Kira Madden. This is a memoir by one of the heirs to the Madden Shoe Empire. She talks about what it was like growing up with immense wealth and privilege, but also how difficult it was to deal with both of her parents' addiction issues. But from fathers to mothers, I am also planning on reading Finding the Mother Tree, Discovering the Wisdom of the Forest by Suzanne Simard. This was written by a forest ecologist who's actually been compared to Rachel Carson. In this book, she discusses the intelligence and the communication abilities of trees. This one came highly recommended by a friend of mine, which is why I wanted to prioritize it. Over the years, I've heard people speak very highly of The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat and Other Clinical Tales by Oliver Sacks. This is a book full of stories of people with different neurological issues that cause them to perceive the world in highly unique ways. I am someone with an interest in Soviet history, so I put two books on that topic on my 20. 24 list. This first one was very popular for quite some time. It's called Midnight in Chernobyl, The Untold Story of the World's Greatest Nuclear Disaster by Adam Higginbotham. This is, of course, a history of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. I would also very much like to read Dressed for a Dance in the Snow, Women's Voices from the Gulag by Monica Zugstova. This is a collection of interviews from former female prisoners who discuss these camps and what their own experiences in these camps were like quite some time ago now. 
now I read Gulag by Anne Applebaum, which was such a triumph. It gave an entire history of the Gulag system. But I think it's going to be equally as impactful to get some firsthand experiences about what these camps were actually like. The next book on my list was also inspired by my 2023 list, as a few other of my picks have been. In 2023, I read Reading Lolita in Tehran by Azar Nafisi, and I liked it so much that I really wanted to put her newest book on my 2024 list. It's titled Read Dangerously, The Subversive Power of Literature in Troubled Times. And this book discusses the power that literature has in politics, in traumatic times, and also in our everyday lives. And given the concerning uptick in book banning that we've been seeing recently, this one seems more important than ever. The penultimate book on my 2024 nonfiction list is one that I actually won in a Goodreads giveaway during the pandemic. I started it, but I never finished it, and I would really like to. It's called The Address Book, What Street Addresses Reveal About Identity, Race, Wealth, and Power by Deirdre Mask. This is all about street addresses, the history of them, and what they reveal about us in the modern world. I remember really liking the early chapters of this, and I'm excited to go back and finish it. And then lastly, the final nonfiction book I want to make sure I read in 2024 is Big Magic, Creative Living Beyond Fear by Elizabeth Gilberts. This book seems to be a motivational work of nonfiction. It's based in the way that Elizabeth Gilbert sees creativity and living a creative life. For the longest time, I didn't consider myself a creative person. I am much more logical, so I just figured I wasn't very creative until there was an aha moment when I realized that making these booktube videos, it's very much a creative process for me and one that I really enjoy. And ever since then, I've been wanting to tap more into my own creativity. And I just love the way Elizabeth Gilbert sees the world. I'm not normally a reader of self-help or motivational type books, but because I admire her so much and because this is a topic that I feel like I could use more of in my life, it went on my list. And that was my list of my priority nonfiction books for 2024. These definitely won't be all of the nonfiction books that I read over the course of the year. I love nonfiction, so I'll be reading way more than 24. These are just the ones that I want to make sure I have read before the year is over. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to do that because 24 is kind of a perfect perfect number. That means exactly two books per month, which is about what I was doing in 2023. So I'm very confident that come the end of 2024, I will have read all of the books on this list. I would love to hear your thoughts about these books. Do you want to read them? Have you read them? Do you want to share your thoughts with me, positive or negative? I would love to know what I'm getting into with these books. I won't be making any changes to this list. I have finalized it, but I would really love to know what to expect. So please feel free to share your thoughts with me down in the comment section below, or if you would just like to chat with me, we can talk there as well. All the books that I did mention today will be listed and linked for you in the description box below. And and at the bottom of that exact same description box, you'll also see links to everywhere you can find me around the internet, like Goodreads, Instagram, the Story Graph, all the places I'm the most active, in case you want to keep up with what I'm reading and doing right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.